I'm going to put. This will now be recorded. I'll, I'll put all on mute except for you, Rosemary. Okay. Okay. Can you hear me now? Hello. Uh, hopefully you guys can hear me. Um, Peg, if you if you can't, just yes, let me know. Yes, we can, yes. Okay, so this is Rosemary Scrivens. I'm the Director for Economic okay. Development and Planning in the town of Southbridge. Um, this meeting is being recorded. Um, this uh, meeting was posted publicly in the town hall of Southbridge, Charlton, and Sturbridge, um, and shared widely uh, by all three communities. Um, so uh, do, I do want to thank everyone for, um, I guess, virtually participating tonight and just want to let you know that um, if you have, we're going to give um, people a chance to speak or ask questions and we just ask that everyone um, try to stay brief and um, stay uh, polite um, and, uh, you know, everything will work out fine. So. Um, this is the uh, Department of Housing and Community Development Program. The money actually emanates from HUD, the federal, pro uh, federal agency of HUD. Um, this is a community development block grant, um, but it's, it is specifically meant to address um, the issues that have um, arisen with the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, it's June 3rd. 2020, 6 p.m. It's a public hearing for this grant opportunity. It will be a regional application for the towns of Southbridge, Charlton, and Sturbridge. Next slide. Is this something that I have to, do I need to get to the next slide or is this something that you can do, Peg? It's something that I do. I'm trying. Oh. My computer's a little slow. Sorry. Okay, that's all right. Wow. Guess it is slow. Okay. So we're um, and if you can enlarge that a little bit, the the joys of virtual meetings and presentations. So um, as you can see, this grant opportunity is being referred to as a CDBG CV. Um, uh, funding. It is it stands for COVID, I, I imagine, um, or cor coronavirus. So the town, um, together with the with Charlton and Surbridge, is requesting a total of two hundred and fifty thousand um, dollars for what is being called a micro enterprise um, assistance program. Um, the point of this is to help businesses survive during this pandemic and beyond um, financially. Um, it is a competitive grant. Um, uh, the town of Southbridge is one of several what's referred to as many to many entitlement communities in the state where um, each year we are eligible to apply and um, as long as we follow all the rules, um, we do receive uh, the funds. Uh, so it's not competitive for us annually. Um, this is a special program or a special grant opportunity that is competitive to 314 what's called non-entitlement communities in the um, Commonwealth of Massachusetts. So um, where, you know, there's some towns that have uh, demographics that are kind of struggling um, that's what makes them um, kind of entitled to apply every year um, for the normal regular program. This is a um, very unusual time as we all know. So even communities that don't normally have a lot of economic problems, um, those communities have businesses right now that are really hurting. So that's the point is to try to help as many businesses as possible. Um, so the definition, the way the Department of Housing and Community Development defines micro enterprises, it's, it's a, it's a for-profit business with five or fewer employees, and that includes one or more um, who is uh, the owner of the, of the business. You can go to the next slide.
thank you. Um, if you can enlarge that a little bit more. Um, okay, thank you. So it is not, um, as, as you can, you would surmise, it's uh, businesses are eligible, so for-profit entities, not um, non-profits. And it's um, those businesses that have um, income, the owners have an income that is below um, or equal to the low and moderate income thresholds according to federal guidelines. So it, there's federal guidelines here because as I mentioned, the source of these funds is HUD. Um, so the point of it is to provide working capital to cover business expenses, uh, the, the typical monthly expenses such as rent, uh, you know, payroll, utility costs. It's not to um, allow a business to expand or to purchase. Um, a new property. It's, you know, kind of their regular every day, every month expenses that they're just really having a hard time covering specifically because of the shutdown due to the um, pandemic. Um, what uh, is, um, there are a few businesses. So remember, these are all federal rules and then there may be some state rules that were kind of um, melded in. Um, so the business types, you can probably see that are not eligible are real estate um, businesses that, um, let's see, yeah, real estate rentals sales or sales businesses, businesses owned by persons under age 15, um, chains, liquor stores, weapons um, or fire, any type of firearm dealer, lobbyists or cannabis businesses. Um, the business must be currently in operation. So in other words, it hasn't closed, you know, as a permanent, it may be shut down due to the virus. Um, so it's currently operational um, and has been, and was established prior to January 1st of 2019. Um, the business uh, must be in good standing with the state and um, local governments. Um, in other words, it must be current on all taxes that were due through March 1st before the pandemic um, triggered all of these shutdowns. Um, it must have active and valid state licenses and uh, registrations if applicable and um, not be a party to any uh, current litigation involving the state or the local government. Uh, next slide, please. So um, I guess, boy, that was quicker than I was expecting. So um, we are going to be um, looking at uh, a, a, a certain threshold for um, what people can apply for. The state um, has um, indicated that up to $10,000 can be awarded to each applicant, um, but we're, our um, applications will probably start at somewhere around $1,000 um, per entity. Um, and um, I, I don't think we've selected a max for our program. I mean, the state's maximum is 10,000. Um, and so, you know, we're, we have to look at, we're gonna be collecting um, materials for the applicants to show, to, sh you know, document what their income, their revenue was, for the last year, um, first of all, to show that they meet the income threshold for being lower moderate income, um, and then also to show uh, what was your loss, what what is the harm that this um, the coronavirus did to your business. So um, then, you know, that's why you would uh, the business would have to provide documentation on what the revenue was and and the ultimate. Um, income of the business, you know, for a certain period of time uh, last year that coincides with this time, the same time this year. And then we would look at the loss. And that's what, um, that's very, at a very high level, that's what the business would be eligible for. Um, so I guess this would just be a good time to uh, ask for questions or comments from uh, anyone that is, uh, participating right now.
So, Peg, would it make sense for people to raise their hand if they have a comment or a question? And then you can unmute them, I'm not sure. Yes, I put that be the car. Um, do we want to give uh, Jeff? Um, so Jeff Bridges is the town administrator from Sturbridge, and um, he is he had contacted us, and he, he's partnering with us, um, which we're thrilled about. And as is Charlton, um, but the town administrator. Um, Bridges uh, is participating tonight, and uh, Jeff, would you like to say a few words before uh, we'll switch back to see if there's any comments or questions? Yes, I'd just like to thank the town of Southbridge for hosting the grant and bringing Charlton and Sturbridge into uh, this project. Um, it's exciting for our local businesses. I've sent you some feedback we've gotten from some of our uh, business owners in town that may be able to add. Uh, access these funds, so we just appreciate it and support the support the grant application 100%. Great, that's great. Um, I think it's this is a time to be neighborly, you know, um, whether it's community to community or actual neighbor to neighbor, state to state. Um, I think it's important um, as we, we've all heard this phrase many times. We're all in this together, so we're very mm -hmm. happy to to do this um, with you, Jeff. Well, thank you. Appreciate the opportunity. So Peg is, uh, so this is kind of, our, kind of our, oh, what's that? What's that? Was that someone with a question? Was someone with a question? So um, this is a time when, uh, if you have questions or comments, please feel free. Um, otherwise, you can certainly contact um, me at, um, in Southbridge. In fact, I don't, did we, I'm not sure we had um, my contact info. Oh, is my con, I can't see, the print is so small. Um, but I'll just, uh, it's, so uh, it would be either myself or Peg Dean um, that are gonna be the leads on this. Um, we're, the uh, due date on this application, at first it was June 5th, which is this Friday, and that was going to be very difficult for all the communities to get their applications in. So the state wisely moved the deadline back to June 12th, um, right, June 12th, next Friday. Um, so uh, they don't know yet exactly when they're going to be announcing the awards. Um, once we get the awards, we're going to hit the ground running and start um, soliciting for applications. We're gonna have a first round. Um, and the point of this is to get money out on the street as quickly as possible, because this is when the businesses are suffering. Um, so uh, if you can, hopefully you can read the contact info on that page, but I'll just say it anyway. So I'm uh, once again, Rosemary Scrivens and I'm the Director for Economic Development and Planning in the town of Southbridge. Um, and Peg Dean is the C CDBG coordinator. You can reach both of us in the same office at 508-764-5402 or email us. Um, and the, the format is, so my email is my first initial, my last name, so rscrivens at southbridgemass.org. And Peg Deans is uh, her. Her name is actually Margaret, so it's M Dean D E A N at SouthbridgeMass.org. Um, we'd be happy to answer you, your questions um, even now in the in this period leading up to finding out whether we're going to be awarded. But um, and then once we're awarded, as I said, we are going to do a lot of um, pretty uh, strenuous outreach because we want to get this money out to the people that need it. Peg, did you want to say anything? No, I think you covered it. You did a great job. Thank you. Uh, and thank you for listing our contact information. I hadn't, in fact, put it on there. So that was very helpful. OK. OK, well, um, I, I always Excuse hate me. Sure. Hi, um, I've, I've actually spoke to you before on the phone. 
Um, I was Hi. ineligible. Huh? Hi, Sharon. I see your name. Hi. <laughs> so how do I go about getting this application? So we haven't, okay, so we're applying for the grant that will then give us the ability to uh, get the applications out to the businesses that need them. So once we get the award, um, we will get the applications out. And, um, but right, it's, this is great that you're attending. Um, you can give us your contact info and we will absolutely put you on the list and send it out to you. So again, just cross your fingers that we get this grant from the state, the three communities. Um, I have a very, um, I'm very optimistic. So once we get it is when we will send the application out. But um, I am gonna take down your contact info. Um, so I see your name, Sharon Latour. And uh, Sharon, um, what town are you from? Oops, can you hear me, Sharon? Oh, can you unmute Sharon, Peg? She's unmuted on my end. And what you might want to do is just ask Sharon to contact us using our contact information so that she doesn't necessarily yeah. have to put her contact yeah. information. My computer is doing something. So Sh Sharon, okay, why don't Sorry? you, did you catch our contact info? You know, you're breaking up a little bit. Oh, what did you so say? Did you, uh, did you get our contact info when I just uh, provided it? Uh, what would you prefer to do? You can either provide your contact info now uh, so that we have it, and if we get this grant, we will send an application yeah. to you, or would you prefer to contact us directly in our office? Can I just call you? Yes. Yeah, you can call us at 508-764-5402 in our office. Okay. Should, right. So tomorrow I should call you? Yeah, you can call us in our office tomorrow. We're okay. we're there. We're back. Okay. And we'll go over in more detail. And we'll get your contact info, and we'll make sure you're on the list. So as soon as we know we got this grant, you'll be one of the first to receive an application. Wonderful. Wonderful. Thank you. You're welcome. I'll contact you in the morning. That sounds good. Thanks. Thank you. I'm glad you came. I'm glad you uh, showed up tonight. Yeah, my, myself too. <laughs> okay. Well, I guess with that, if there are no more questions, we'll uh, wish you all um, a nice evening and uh, we'll be in touch. We'll keep you posted. Okay. So Thank at you. this point, we're going to formally close the hearing. Uh, Again, any uh, interest in contacting the office, please call us 508-764-5402. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Oh, thank you. thank you, Jeff. Thanks. All right, bye-bye. Are you all set, Sharon? Do you want me to keep it on for a little longer? No, I'm good. Okay, great. All right, thank you so much for attending. Be well. Thank you. Bye-bye. And Paul, what do you see now? Where?